Hey everyone, it's Cody Fry. Today we're going to go through my cover of Fix You, give it a little song breakdown, take it apart for you guys so you can kind of see what's under the hood. So I've always loved Coldplay. It was one of the first kind of big concerts that I ever went to see. I saw them at the United Center in Chicago when I was in high school, and it just left such a mark on me. Their music has just such a it's such a powerful force, especially in that like arena setting. And what I really like to do is between albums, I like to do a cover as sort of like a palate cleanser. Writing songs for me is like hard and <laughs> takes a lot out of me. And so I like to just have fun with a song that I like uh, and try to make something cool out of it. So this is my cover of Fix You. I thought it would be cool to start here in Logic, which is where I sort of create the demos. So this is what that looks like. I will go ahead and open up all of the folders so you can see all the tracks here let's just play back and see what this sounds like here when you try your best but you don't succeed when you get what you want but not what you need so you'll notice here actually that there are a couple of different pianos going on this piano is actually that piano so recorded it for real uh, and then you'll see actually a MIDI piano here, which is the Spitfire Gwilym Simcock felt piano, which I just love. So you can hear the difference between the real and the MIDI. And then this is the MIDI. I just felt like for whatever reason, the real piano wasn't getting quite as much bass response as this MIDI piano was, and I really needed that like low end to fill out the mix for this next section. One of the other textures I love, also from Spitfire, is this Tundra library. I think it's called, yeah, it's called Albion Tundra. And this is one of their like brass samples. It's pretty subtle, but I really love the texture that it adds. The Tundra Library from Spitfire is one of my favorite libraries. It's so great for those sort of like icy, airy textures. I don't know if I'm doing a good job describing it, but I, I love it. While we're on Tundra, I actually use it also for this section here. This is using some of the kind of high strings, one of my favorite patches, which, which is this, uh, what's it called? The Ricochet patch. Ah, just like has that sort of really tactile feeling, which I just love. So one of the things I did on this track was after the lyric stuck in reverse, I wanted the orchestra to play in reverse. So actually at the end of this logic file, I mapped out what I wanted them to play. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> so that's kind of the MIDI version. Uh, and when you reverse it, this is what it sounds like. So I then wrote that out in finale for the orchestra to play. So this is the score for Fix You. As you can see, it's sort of a reduced orchestra, just flutes, clarinets, contrabassoon, French horns, obviously, and then the rest of the brass, uh, and then harp and strings. So we're missing oboes, bassoons, just a couple other things. And you won't see any percussion on this score because uh, I recorded all the percussion myself, either MIDI or with stuff I have in the studio here. But if you go to the score here, this is the stuck in reverse line right here, and you'll notice that there's nothing written here because at the very end of the score, you'll see this thing that's called insert, and this is what I had them play that we then reversed. One texture I like on this is that leading into the choruses, you have this sort of like sine wave scale run thing that's almost like a flute run, which I really love, but it's more synthetic, you'll hear it. So you just play that in as like a really fast scale and it's just kind of a nice kind of swell texture that brings us into the chorus. So I don't do this for every song that I make, but in this song, I decided to kind of fully demo out the entire arrangement before writing down any notation. So I was writing in Logic using the MIDI instruments that I have to kind of create the entire arrangement. And then I went into Finale, notated everything, and made the parts for the real orchestra players, which on this track was the Royal Philharmonic Orchestra in London, 
We recorded at Angel Studios. It was unbelievable. So while we're in Logic, let's skip over to the end where it gets really big and let's take a look at some of this percussion because this is stuff that all stayed in for the final track. It's a mix of a lot of different things. One of the libraries I use a ton is this Strike Force <laughs> cinematic percussion library. I just love it. Here's all the Strike Force stuff. I just, it, the round robins are really good and like, it just, I don't know, it just has such a great sound. Super playable on the keyboard too, which is important for me. Tycho sticks here. The mix with the pong snare, which is a sample that I just really love. <laughs> I don't know, I think it kind of sounds like hitting a ping pong ball or a tennis ball or something like that. And the thunder sheet also accents every other snare. And we're kind of mixing these sort of like synth crashes with more traditional cymbal crashes that give it sort of like a modern cinematic percussion feel, which I like a lot. So here's all the percussion. Let's hear how that comes together. Have this sort of 808 kick that's kind of supporting the bass. I really like when these sticks come in. These It's from the Hans Zimmer Percussion Library from Spitfire, and uh, you get these like really fun stick patterns. So some of the MIDI orchestra stuff stayed too. For example, like a lot of the low brass uh, stayed in, just because when we were recording the brass, we had a nice a regular size orchestral brass section, but for a song like this, you need like eight trombones and 16 French horns. You want it to be enormous. So I printed all this MIDI brass and it stayed. Just like really helps to fill it out. You'll see once we go over to Pro Tools. The other thing that stayed was this patch I like that is called Slam Strings. Uh, this is just kind of the 2T time machine patch for staccato strings in Spitfire. What I love about the time machine patch is that there's this stretch function. So you can use that. It makes the note longer or shorter. And so depending on the tempo, you can use the stretch to get the notes to be sort of the right length for the tempo that you're operating at. So I use the time machine patches a ton when I'm doing stuff like this that's like really tight strings. And then I use the OTT compressor thing uh, to make it really sound slam. And you'll hear, I'll play it without it first. When you add it. And these, these slam strings stayed in for the final track uh, just because it just really helps with like the pocket and then also just making the strings just sound huge. Cool, so let's jump over to Pro Tools. And like I've said in these videos a lot of times before, everything ends up in Pro Tools. When we go to record the orchestra, it has to be in Pro Tools because that's what all the major studios operate in. And then I send Pro Tools files to the mixing engineers just because it's kind of like for better or for worse, the industry standard. We're listening to this Pro Tools file. This is exactly how it gets sent to the mixing engineer. So this is kind of like what they hear when they hit the space bar is kind of like my rough mix. So one thing we did for this song beyond the orchestra was we also recorded like a small choir of several vocalists to kind of really fill out the end. Uh, and so you get this amazing vocal sound that just sort of really widens it. For my vocals in the bridge, it's a super high thing for me to sing. And if you solo them up, you can actually hear me kind of losing it a little bit. Down your face and I... <laughs> There's just like that little crack. <laughs> and I left it in because I thought it added sort of like even more emotion. Like it's supposed to be like 
at the top of your lungs, you know? And so to kind of have those little imperfections in there, I don't know, it just adds a little bit of emotion. Another vocal I like is this ad lib vocal that comes in towards the end and we processed it with like that sound toys devil lock distortion plug-in and some tape delay and it just really gives it a nice lift. It almost sounds like a synth. like tons of grit so you'll see here in the pro tools file like there's the tundra strings those were not recorded live the sample sounds so good we just use the samples and there's such like a specific sound so to try to recreate that with live players would just kind of be a waste of time in the studio so um you'll, yeah you'll see some of that stuff kind of just is in here here's all the real orchestra stuff you can see it's like a billion tracks um and i don't really know how to mix this stuff so i sort of just mute most of <laughs> the microphones because <laughs> I don't know what to do with them. So I'll play actually my favorite part of the whole song, which is the second bridge when the brass comes in with that sort of like fanfare-esque type thing. It just sends me through the freaking roof. So the, here's, here's that brass with the woodwinds as well. And actually, I'll mute the vocals so that you can kind of hear it just in the context of the track with all the percussion. Ah. And then the roadway. It's intense. I like it a lot. <laughs> it really gets me fired up. Because you never know, you write something and you think, gosh, I hope this sounds good. But then like the second those instrumentalists played it live in the studio, I just like, I fell over. It was just, it was such a fun moment to just hear that come out with such force and just, I don't know, it just played so well by these players. Since we gave some love to the winds, here's the second chorus with strings only, and I just, I love the sound of consort strings. Played so well. There's like a little single violin that sticks out at the end of that crescendo. It's actually fake. It's this guy right here. Sounded good? Left it in. Here's some advice for any young orchestrators out there. I had this sort of trumpet staccato thing that I wanted to happen during the bridge, and it's kind of light. It sounds like this. Sort of kind of doubling that string line, the, the original guitar line from the original song. Um, and it just sort of goes on, as you can see, for the entire time. Now, I could have written that in for the trumpets to play, but boy would that have gotten boring <laughs> for them. <laughs> and it just takes a lot of breath, and it's just the mental load of just having to play that same note over and over. I was like, you know, these samples sound pretty good, and rather than make the trumpets play that, I'm just going to give them a cooler part to play in the second bridge, and just let that remain samples. I think sometimes it's okay, especially in pop writing like this, it's okay to let the samples do the parts that are sort of like grunt work a little bit, and then just bring in the humans for the parts that really need that humanity, the sort of emotion of a human player. Whereas like this staccato thing doesn't need all that much emotion. I'm sure it would sound a little bit better if we had had real players do it, but it would have been tedious and kind of annoying for them. And so in the context of a session where you're recording 10, 12 songs in a single day, 
uh, it's helpful to just kind of trim that fat off and just say, you know what, samples sound great. Let's have the trumpets play stuff that's a bit more fun. Oh, and I know that the original Coldplay version has organ, and so I actually did include pipe organ uh, f during the bridge. <laughs> it's just the Spitfire symphonic organ, which sounds great, but it's just sort of like a little homage to the original. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can say about this one. Yeah, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. I'll do my best to try to answer them. Uh, yeah, this was such a fun thing to create. And also, if you want to hear more, if you go to my website, there's like a fix you listening experience where you can solo different elements of the song while it's playing and kind of create your own custom mixes. And so if you want to like dig in more to like the different parts and sections of the orchestra, it's like a really great tool beyond this video where you can kind of listen for yourself. Yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're watching this video all the way to the end, we'd probably be friends. So yeah, I mean, truly... This is so much fun to make. Thanks for supporting my music.